it's on in here. It's game on. And I'm going to make this quick because I've just seen a croc, but look at that. What a beauty, eh? Hit it twice. Oh, yep, got it. Good fish, too. That's woken me up. A little bit of a late start today because I had Lauren out for dinner last night. What a fish. Look at that. We're staying in Port Douglas. I've found my creek. I've gone for a fair drive this morning, but I've found my creek and this might be all happening. Right, folks. Well, I'm out at it again. I'm going to be chasing mangrove jack today. It's, well, it's a bit later than the morning. It's getting away now. I've had morning tea with the kids and the wife back in at Port Douglas and I've just found on Google Maps a tiny little creek. I've just put in here and I'm going to get after it. I've got some lures in, some skipping plastics and some diving lures. So I'm going to see what I can find, but it's an unknown. I'm basically just trying to find these remote creeks a little bit out of town or as far away as I can possibly go and uh, chase some mangrove jack and some great fishing up here to bring to you guys. Let's get into it. Yes, got it. Oh, and I got to see it too because the tide's still high. It's early in the bite period. Tide's still high. Look at the trevally coming after that. Oh, it's a beautiful big jack and there's a team of trevs down there with it. What should I do? Should I drop another plucky down? No, a little bit too keen. There's trevs down there. Have a look at this. That's a belter taking on the skipping plastic. Oh, that's woken me up. Cool. A little bit of a late start today because I had Lauren out for dinner last night. We're staying in Port Douglas. I've found my creek. I've gone for a fair drive this morning, but I've found my creek and this might be all happening. Got to run out tide. It's still quite high, which is beautifully clear to see everything. Look at that. Oh, the way they take these lures. How good. All right, back in the water for you, buddy. Back in the game for me, I'm going to keep going. This has got the right feels. I've had about 10 casts to get behind. And when there's a team of fish that come out like that, boy, it gets me excited that there is a bite right on right now. The Jack was first, he beat the Trevs. Yes, again! Oh, geez. That was a little barra. I saw him. Yes! Oh, yes, I'm on. Oh, he's bricked me. Not paying attention. I don't know what's happened here. I might still be on and he's and the jacks run me around this log here after I have a look. Wouldn't be the first time. Nah, he's gone. Ah. Oh, yep, got it. Good fish too. Oh, that is awesome. Nice big dark jack, this one. And he's come out of that big dark patch too. What a fish. Look at that. Right out of that angled tree back with the, oh, geez, he's fat as. And I'm gonna make this quick because I've just seen a croc, but look at that. What a beauty, eh? Hit it twice. And, oh, that is just outstanding. Back you go, mate. There's crocs around. I've just seen a couple of metery on the other bank there and he's just slithered in as I came around the corner. This is just brilliant. Just finding these edges where there's this fallen timber for me is the best. It sort of brings the fish up into that water column that I really love to fish, that shallower stuff. Gives me a better chance of pulling the jack out too, but mate, what a spot. Keep checking my shoulder to be honest. Oh, Jack right there, team of them. Oh, come out here, buddy. That's brilliant. 
Well, it had to be on that snag. Look at that. And I reckon I might get another off it, which never happens to me. But there was plenty in there. They were all dead cane. Look at that beautiful, beautiful little jack. Oh, God. They're a bit camera shy, these jacks. <laughs> they don't like close-ups for the GoPro. I'll give you this. Right, let's have a look. Is there more in there? Let's see. Thought, don't sink the first cast down because you might you might get a nice surprise. Oh, there's a team of them. There they are again. Got it. Oh, brilliant stuff. Look at it. There's a team of them down there. Mate, they were fighting over it. And I love it when they get competitive. When the fight's on, there is just some spectacular stuff to be seen. Oh, boy, this makes me happy enjoying a bit of fish like this. Ah. <sighs> This sort of fishing just gets me going. Seeing these fishing teams come out off the snag and hammer a lure, mate, doesn't get any better for me with this skip casting and ripping things in. I'm testing these lures, seeing how high and high in the water I can bring it in before they come and grab it. It's barely under the surface. Beautiful little section, run out tide, big fall and timber. Have a look, have a look at it where I'm fishing. Yes! Good fish. Oh, brick me too. Come out, come out. That's a good jack. Beautiful. On the first cast lure too. Have a look at this. <laughs> He's just woofed that down off behind that big fallen bit of timber. Now this is midday fishing and what I might do, I might talk you through how I like to fish during these later morning sessions where you get out a little bit later and chase jacks on these barra. Oh, how good. They are just crunching down on this stuff and it's so much fun. I'll, um, I'll get this one back in the water and just get a little bit of stuff together to share with you what I've been doing to get these bites. Oh, mate. He's not letting go of the plastic he wants it so much. Have a look at that. Off you go, buddy. Try to get them back in pretty quick here because of these crocs, but... Um, there's a way of doing this so you can extend your sessions and there's tactics that I've shared over the years in some of my skip casting videos and fishing with prawns and things but I'll go into detail now and try and take you through what I'm doing to continue to get this bite. So probably my favourite bite time is, is early morning and that's just because you can get onto the surface feeding fish, they're up in the shallows often and there's just a lot of bait traffic going on. They've had the night to reset and get out on the prowl and do their thing, but fishing when you when you come out like I have this morning, so I had breakfast with the family, come out with the, um, with the kids squared away for the day, and you've got a couple of hours during the middle of the day, there's a few things that you can get into. Let's get into it. So I'll show you what I'm using to start with. So that's a first cast plastic by a bloke out at Matt, I think he lives out at Oxenford or Maudsland or something just uh, on the Gold Coast. And the paddling tail, the weedless rig setup means that I can get into the shadows and underneath cover. And as the fishing session progresses, the fish tend to be more tentative to leave that cover, leave those, those shadows. So skip casting deep into cover is one way of extending your bite session. Um, I'll show you what else I've got rigged on as well as we head back up here to this edge. Because that's, that's what I've been doing and I've been catching fish doing that. But I've also got on here, this is a suspending lure, a timber suspending lure by Frequent Flash. And it's heavy terminal, so BKK trebles and everything. And that gets down nice and deep with that deep bib. And then just sits down a little bit deeper than any of my skipping plastics are going to get. So fishing deeper in the, in the middle of the day can be a really good option. And if my skip casting slows up, that's when I start to bring this out. Or the other option is to fish with a slower moving, so a plastic that still can be rigged weedless, and you can use the TT snake lock systems or just something like this. And you can fish a prawn lure, and prawn lure retrieves them are a lot slower, and that allows you to get down deeper. So as Traditionally, as it works, and bass are a lot like this, 
Um, mangrove jack, you know, can be like this, where they go and hide deep under snags during the middle of the day because of their light sensitive eyes. A slower retrieved lure that can get down under the tree and not be buzzing across the top of it can be, yeah, oh, just missed one. He's on, oh, again, come on, come on. They're down the end of this tree. Oh, geez, they're after it, eh? It's mad. And I just, I just skip, skip cast this with a paddle tail and missed everything. And there you go, the little prawn, that slow moving prawn that gets a little bit deeper has just pulled the bite. So it allows me to get down into the timber a lot better. And they love prawns, like everything smashes prawns, everything eats a prawn, there's no two ways about it. So fishing with a prawn to slow down your retrieve is a great way to go about it. Especially if you're fishing really heavy cover, like where I am now, there's big fallen timber, but I'm probably gonna you know, fish, a, fish this a couple of times. I might buzz along it with this plastic, sitting it down into the edges of these rocks and around the backs of these big fallen bits of timber. But then I'll probably come back and do it all deep with the suspending, you know, with that frequent flash lure. Oh, got it, I missed that. They were after it. They were just small jacks, but they were still after it. It's a great way to keep a bite going and to show you what, what it's all about. So one tip with these prawn lures, what you want is, for the most part, you want a prawn that falls very naturally. So that natural moving tail at the back there is brilliant, but also a balanced prawn that moves down just like a prawn does. A prawn never swims really straight down like that. So a traditional jig head, if you're fishing with a traditional jig head, you want to keep some tension on your line. I'll show you what I mean. So as soon as you throw it out there, lay the line on the water and that gives you a straight line of contact so that you're not getting blown around with the wind and getting slack line. And it also means that there's like some tension, the surface tension of the water on your line pulls that lure back into position a little bit. Especially if you're, lose, if you're using like really light jig heads, which is a good way to go because it slows the sink rate down gives the fish a chance to have a look at it. So that's one technique that I love to use. It also gives you like an indicator like they use with fly fishing so you can see something on the surface. So that line forms this, it almost acts like an indicator. So when you get a tap, if, if there is a belly in the line because of the tide or whatever, you can see that your line just gets shunted and moved because it's sitting on the surface there. So there's a couple of tips for how to fish during the middle of the day. Look for those shadows, and it might not be shadows that you can see visually on the surface. It could be shadows that are cast by fallen timber that you know are there, and the fish are sitting in those shadows underneath the timber. And during the middle of the day, you want to get further down. Early morning, jacks will come out from underneath. They'll hear it, pick it up with their, with their lateral lines and all their sensors, and They'll come out and search for that bait as it moves past. During the middle of the day, they might be more reluctant. You've got to literally get it down, present it right on their nose. And that's where a weedless presentation just sets, every, sets itself apart from absolutely everything. I love to fish the back of these fallen logs. There's always deep timber and like ground out areas where the mud and all that's been sort of swirled out from underneath those big fallen bits of timber. So that's a great place to look for jacks. And these back eddies and little jutty out sections of rock are just money for this sort of stuff too. Let's see if we can pick something up on this prawn. So little hops and that sort of thing just to wake the fish up. Just sort of present the lure. And then it's just a slow, slow wind just to keep in touch with it. As the tide's coming back, you can see I'm sort of just keeping pace with the tide. So it's falling and swimming really naturally there in the water column. Those little legs on this little 360 GT, they still go mad as they're coming through the water. They're really soft legs and, you know, most, most little prawn imitations have some form of vibe to them and even those little legs or those little shuddering back segments are enough like a little almost like a micro action that still triggers the fish and gets them to bite it doesn't it doesn't need much at all these fish are super tuned to absolutely everything that comes past them i 
I might, while we're rolling, I might just bring you over. I just heard a bust on this side, and I'll show you what it's like fishing around some of these mangrove line banks. This is the shallow side on here. So, you know, usually if you're livey fishing, you drop them down the deep side, but you can, you can definitely go and hit the shallow side. And I did that to really good effect in the Kayaker's Guide to the Gold Coast DVD when I was chasing jacks and, and bass and trevally and things like that. During the middle of the day, you can still pick fish up that are searching and feeding hard on the shallow side if there's um, cover like in the form of shadows and overhangs and things like that. Let's see if we can get it done with this little prawn imitation. Especially if there's intermittent cloud, so I, I tend to think that the, the fish move a lot, based even based on cloud cover, and you get a little bit of cloud that's just come over. Like right now, the clouds just come over. You get sort of five, ten minutes of that. It's an, it's a great little period to just go and check to see if there are fish coming out feeding on the shallow side when the clouds overhead and the light drops because that's a moment where they can maybe gain an advantage against the bait where they can't be seen as well or just gives especially the jacks a chance with their big eyes to try and capture some bait. You've just got to be a lot more stealthy. On the shallow side, because it's so shallow, there's not a lot of water, I just try to be real quiet and stealthy. Usually here it's calmer, right? Whereas on the, on the deeper side, where the the wind sort of snakes down a creek, it can get really blowy and you're sort of hidden, your approach is hidden a bit more. Whereas here, super calm, super quiet, just still. Best shot is like dead silence. All right, so hopefully that gives you some things to think about with your fishing during the middle of the day. These weedless setups and these prawn imitations or little shad styles and then the deeper running, deep diving lures that are suspending. You know, you want something that's gonna sit in the face of a face of a jack or a barramundi, something that suspends like a little mullet or a whiting imitation like that and suspends balanced with the right sort of trebles on there. That's the way to go. Yep, got one. Oh, full parallel casting this bank here. I think little Trev. Oh, there's teams of them. There's a few of them. They might get nabbed. Cutest little Trev on the suspending little frequent flash. All right, folks, well, I've got to get off the water, get back home. We are packing up and moving again tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've got a ton of stuff coming. There are lure reviews as well that I'm going to be releasing mostly midweek. But on the weekends, it's the fishing adventure right around the country. Take a look at what's up next, and I'll see you in the next video.